But I just wanted to show you a third down play where Southern Florida is bringing just a little bit of heat. We talk about the fact that they bring a lot of blitz uh, pressure, and they're bringing there's just their standard pressure coming off the edge here, bringing their one of their backers, and they're bringing their three and bringing their five. So what they've made here is what's called I just called a Louis call. All right, which means your center and guard working back this way. And since there's nobody there for the guard, they're going to double team tackles on an island here. So that means the guard this side working the three technique, tackle working the five technique. F back's got to take anything that shows here. Now, if he doesn't show, he can step up and end up running a check down or something out of that. I'm sure. I'm sure they've got some kind of check down concept out of this, but he's got to step up and make sure there's nobody coming. And in this case, right now, there is somebody on their way. So your pass pro is a Louis call and you get what you want here. Now, what I've noticed is that their right side without Proctor in there, I know Proctor's over here typically at this tackle. Um, this is really suspect. These two guys are letting people get across their shoulder to the inside gap, which is the closest lane to the quarterback. Haynes is coming up, he's kind of ducking his head, but he doesn't have a very good frame right here either. So you've got inside shelf pressure, tackles getting beat on the hoop. And what Jalen has got to do and trust off of this is when he sees this pressure right here, he needs to step up in the pocket if he's going to help himself out to give himself a little more time. And I know he's trying to throw before he gets the free safety over, but he knows he's got, um, I believe that's Kendrick Law, if I'm not mistaken, over here. He's got him one-on-one, and he's got what he wants right here, but because he doesn't step up in the pocket and deliver a good ball with the uh, – uh, with good footwork, you know, good footwork in the pocket, he ends up hurting himself out because he ends up taking a shot to his leg right here, throwing off his back foot. And even though he puts some air underneath it, it's still one of those where, you know, he sells the football and could have a little bit more accuracy to him, but he throws it out. He's going to be running, uh, looks like we've got a three by one set. You basically have the H sitting here. This would be the Z. He would be considered the Y. And on the back side here, you could have the X in this position. And this is where Ryan went. I cannot say that Ryan Williams, the 17 year old, as everybody knows him as more than his name is one on one here on the back side. But what they're going to do out of this is they're going to end up running zone. Now I can see this putting us in this formation, honestly, for Georgia to see how we line up to it, to see if they can get that one on one, because we're really from his safety support on this side, they basically have got him locked up on an Island. Okay. They're basically putting 10 in the box to the trip side. Cause honestly, that kid's speed, if he puts a move on him and gets up the sideline, that safety never, he never gets to that. But you know, here they're just running base zone left. So really the technique should be prior to the snap tackle should be stepping out. You should end up getting a post here. He should be climbing and taking over. And then he's going to climb to the inside guy. And the guy that's not accountable is him. He's just so, you know, shallow into the uh into the box right here center is going to help step and whoever takes over it should be realistically this uh the guard should be taking over to climb to him he should post he should take over they're going to climb here and honestly this guy shouldn't touch anybody he should be stepping up inside and probably going to end up working the safety this guy's the read technique we're getting zone left or what i call zulu which is zone left if we're running zone right i call that zaro zone right um, but anyhow, that's my terminology, not anybody else's. I'm sure there's other people that call it that, but that's just what I used when I, I used to run it. And uh, I'm going to watch how they block this here. What I noticed is that there is leverage issues from the center position. So as we put this into play right here, I want you to watch the center. You can see him taking over. You can see the climb. There was really no post by your guard here. But as he climbs, you can tell the center's coming off the block. And what I want to do here is I'm going to slow this down a little bit. Because I want you to be able to see on the uh, on the playback here. Let's move this down about half speed. And, you know, I want to be able to really show you that the center, to me, number 72 is susceptible to this kind of stuff. He looks smaller anyway than most centers are. But you can just see here, he just loses his feet because he's not moving his feet. And, you know, a good play to zone is you're going to have to now make your cut based off the fact that this guy's off his block and ready to make the tackle. I want to tell you right now, this Reed defender does a great job on Milro to make him give. And then he comes down the line of scrimmage and actually makes a great tackle right here, too. But, you know, honestly, zone can be blocked so many different ways and so many different times it'll happen. That's the reason why it's so unique and why you run it a lot. And people don't understand why do you just keep running it up to centers. But because it can be blocked differently so many times by what your defense brings. But the center's block right there, not being maintained. The defensive end doing his job to make Milrow give and then pursue down. And, you know, they make a play at the line of scrimmage. Not a big gain right here. All right, Alabama's going to run a check with me from the sideline. 
looks like we're basically in a trips look right here because I don't see anybody else outside this uh, tight Y right here. So in this case, um, we're going to get set up for our drawing here and uh, let me get this ready to go for you. Um, you know, with the trips formation and you're looking at your uh, short side of the field in the boundary, you got your Y here. So that means you got trips left out here. So this is lucky. This is just an open set where you have nothing connected to the tackle right here. So there's no there's no H sitting here, no Y sitting here. The Y is over here on the line of scrimmage. You should have two off over here with one on. So it's a trips open look is what I call lucky. You got the F back to the right side. And right now they're running a check with me. And what they've shown right out of the gate is this my backer is going to begin to walk down and creep. And then they give themselves a, a check with me from the sideline here. So we're going to watch that develop. And as that develops, now they're setting up for the actual motion that's coming through. And you're going to get this kind of blitz. As they start to set up and come, what you're going to see is the shade that's on this side is going to cross the center's face. I call this a tank blitz. And you're going to bring the mic through here. Now, 26 does a great job of stepping up. That's Jam Miller. Um, everybody else in this case, because of the way it's set up, it looks like they've got a Louie call on anyway. So that means he should be working there to take him anyway. He's going to take whatever shows in weak side gap. They got one-on-one -on -one here and they're ready for any kind of X stunt. They've got these guys set up right here. So the pass pro realistically is pretty good here. Um, but here's something I want to see by Milrose. He sits up in a pocket. This is something, this is a pretty decent pocket right here. OK, but what he's got to do, just like I was talking about with Carson Beck, is he needs to step up in the pocket to gain that momentum so he can get his hips set and get his feet going and his shoulders going in the same direction. He wants to throw the outside vertical right now. OK, they end up getting a pass interference call on this play. But what doesn't make sense to me is I want you to watch how Jalen throws off his back foot. I mean, there's no I mean, I know he's a strong kid and obviously got a lot of arm talent. But like I said, step step into the throw. You've got plenty of space to step up and throw, and you're throwing it more in this window right here as the ball's coming down. And, of course, they've got, you know, a uh, pass interference call, which I really disagree with on that. I think these refs, unfortunately, they just – I don't know. They just want to sit there and call it because it looks like it, but they I don't even know if he was watching the play or not. It's just like, yeah, that kind of looked like pass interference. I'm going to throw a flag. But realistically, I thought the DB did a pretty good job in coverage. But again, it goes back to, you know, when you're looking at Jalen helping himself out in this play, I really don't understand because, you know, Alabama does a good job of picking up the pass pro out of a Louie call. And, you know, Jalen's got to be able to step up in the pocket and deliver that ball. But throwing off the back foot, that's really hurting his Alabama's going to run a jailbreak screen out here to the right. Um, this formation I call Deuce's right. And you've got two receiver side twins on this side. You've got... I think it's Jeremy and Williams on this side. Five is supposed to go out and kick out the corner, and Ryan Williams is going to come back inside and catch. What 75 should be doing is he's going to avoid, get out, and he's going to be your primary kick out. Whatever he sees outside of whatever five is missed, he should be kicking out. The next is the guard. He should be taking right inside 75 and taking anything that shows head up. And realistically, your center should be coming out and looking back behind to peel anything behind. It should be this. So you get the kick out, kick out, fill up inside vertical, peel back, okay? You're going to get the F back coming across the formation like they're on zone. These guys will get out late, but really all they are is just trash trying to get upfield to take anything that might pursue from behind. They end up being useless baggage down the field, tell you the honest truth, in jailbreak screen. But realistically, the big deal is the primary side getting out and getting to the block. Now, right now, uh, Southern Florida is in a cover four, so you got a corner. You've got your uh, strong safety here, free safety. This is your nickel. There's a corner off the screen, so they got three covering two. You've got your H. You got your Y, so this is your pro side to the deuces. Um, and typically, this might be like a Z that could be out wide. And I always look at it based off the tight end. So what they've called here is the strength to the field instead of calling it to the tight end H because they know that our skill players are probably going to get it. Now your F back is going to like say show that zone away to kind of haul and pull in your box. And uh, we're going to put this thing in motion here and watch what happens uh, off of this. So 22, I think, is Haynes, uh, Justice Haynes' kid out of Blessed Trinity from Georgia, and they're going to get the throw here. Now, this is really pitiful, honestly, to tell you the truth. Let me get that off right here. That throw right there is absolutely terrible. What should happen is Ryan should be coming in, and what 
Jalen's throw should be is right on his front shoulder so he can catch that ball in stride and begin to work out. So there's your kick out. He's got the hole player. This guy, if they do it, if these two do it right, this guy should be falling right off his ass cheek and falling up to take care of that safety. And then this guy should be working off of this might backer who is pursuing like hell and just wall him off. That's all you got to do. Just get to him and wall him off. But yet, just like with us, when we run a jailbreak screen, for some odd reason, we have linemen going out and just garden grass. Both of these swinging peckers right here, neither one get to the mic, and the mic chases it down from the backside. Bama's going to run the uh, ghost counter here, or ghost power is what I call it. And the reason why I call it a ghost power, not just standard counter tray, is because you actually have your guard. Let me get this set up right here real quick. You actually have your guard and your H back who are going to be uh, basically taking care of the gap scheme. So if this works correctly, he should be step hinging to get to this side. You're going to have the guard working through him up to that play side backer. This tackle should be getting down inside and digging this guy out. He should be working across with this guy to make sure that he doesn't get across his face. And if he's sealed on this side, climb even to the backside backer because we're leaving into account these two guys on the backside right here for your guard who should be coming to kick him out and your H wrapping to that play side backer. Now, on the back side of this, obviously, you want to make sure that you're getting uh, the proper technique as well because with the guard and the H pulling, that means all you've got left is a three technique in this outside edge. So what he's going to do is step hinge and kind of work on a little bucket step, almost like a kick slide, like he's blocking pass pro to make whoever's there run the hump. Okay. Now the quarterback should be stepping out of the midline a little bit and looking really in this direction. The running back is going to come downhill and follow that guard and the uh, H back through the hole. Now I know without a doubt that we are not reading this as I sit here and watch it, you know, Jalen's going to basically take the snap right here, step somewhat out of the midline. And then you're going to notice with the guard and the tackle pulling. And like I said, I know without a doubt he's not reading that because right now I see his head looking straight ahead. He's looking on the sideline. He's telling Southern Florida, hey there, what's going on? He is not reading that guy. And there's a lot of teams that'll do this, that they'll actually make him read to that play side guy right there and actually pull naked off of that if there's the ability for him to do that. But, you know, they're not doing it right here. But I want you to watch. I know that they've flown over the top here a little bit, but 77 should be kicking him out, and the 8 should end up because he's already up in the hole filling, which is awesome, because you got kind of this big pile right here that's created by all the down blocking. 75 is actually stepping inside to take care of the 3 technique, not even worried about the hump because he's not worried about this guy coming off the edge right here. But what I want you to do is I want you to watch. Ooh, don't want that. I want you to watch this situation right here unfold. I want you to watch 77 and 45 here. What is that? We don't have none of that old lady bullshit. I mean, what in the crap is that right there? Absolutely. Both of those guys whiff on this play. It's, it's unbelievable. Neither one touch a swinging pecker right here. Absolutely. You get a whiff by your guard. You get a whiff by the H. I mean, that's terrible. And you got both of those guys getting up inside to make the play when uh, you've got Division One guards right here and H-backs rapping and nobody touches the guy for Miller and he ends up getting made. You know, what should happen, honestly, if you look at it, I'll pause it right about um, the time where he's whiffing. I'll show it to you real quick. As he's beginning to whiff, all right, what should happen if it's done correctly, he should be kicking him out. 45 should be kicking him out. The F-back should be running inside. It should be one-on-one -on -one with him, okay? But because of them screwing up the play right here, it ends up being basically three-on-one, and it's not a good day. This is going to be something that Bama is going to counter us with on our blitz packages, and I think they do a good job of this. This is basically what I call a deuces uh, left formation where you've got twins to the left-hand side. You've got a pro to this side. In this case, it's an H and your Z over here. The Z is going to basically do his job to run off everybody. If they're running play action out of this, it would be basically the floss concept that we run at Georgia where he's going to set up inside and then be the, the flat defender. You're going to get that orbit motion still out of this. We're going to reverse out. And then, of course, the quarterback's going to, the quarterback's going to boot out of this. All right. And then your F back, they could do a lot of different exchanges off of this right here. Your F-back could come back across to seal for the play action because everybody's stepping for the boot. 
and he seals off the edge from where the orbit motion comes around and he ends up becoming the outlet off of this. So you get the go, you've got the quick and the flat, and then you've got the backside receiver that's left running the drag coming across the field. It's a really good play action play concept out of this as well. But this is something that I think that they're going to do against us, especially if we start getting to them with pressure. And that is being able to run <clears> – <throat> this kind of screen. So what they're going to do is set up the F back inside, get lost in space. And then he's coming out. They're going to invite, 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 and then they're gone. All right. And uh, this is what I call a slip screen or a missile screen <clears throat> out of this, because what you're trying to do is sort of uh, bunker them in and then realize that you're isolating this side of the field. So you're going to remove one receiver on the orbit motion. He's going to show that play action out of that. The other receiver is going to run his drag to clear the field. You got the Z clear in the corner on this side. All the motion is set up to get everybody more or less from this side over. Okay. And when you get that action, that allows the F back now to slip out into the play right here so you can see the f-back step up there's a play action and now you've got the blitz coming they're letting those guys go 90 realizes it way too late that there's a screen on and that's the difference of our defensive lineman realizing that it's a screen versus play action but because he puts his foot in the ground at this point in time these defensive linemen have been invited too far in and now you can dump it out to the f-back and they have a pretty successful play there's your tackle there's your guard You've even got your receiver coming back to help, which is kind of odd right here. But still, just a good play by Bama against the Blitz. Bama is basically in a what I call a Lucy call because you've got X on the line of scrimmage. You've got the H off the line of scrimmage coming in motion for rip motion. And you've got an H connected to the tackle. That's the difference between Lucky and Lucy. Lucky is open. Lucy has an H attached. you got backside one-on-one -on -one with your Z. And this is a play that I think that they're going to try to do with us. Miss, you know, Wisconsin's defensive backfield is a little mid, so they're switching up and running a match. They look like they're in a cover one look right here. So you can see sort of those three guys that are right on the 20-yard line. They've got the number one receiver up top. They've got the number two receiver, the H. And then the one that's walked down on the 20 right here, right beside the big letter G on the big, has the number two receiver on this side. Corner's already locked up with Ryan Williams on this side. And free safety is free. And what they're going to do is get Kendrick Law one-on-one one up top and you know this is something that i'm really wondering about because with the pass pro being good you know milro he could help himself out but he throws the ball like this right here a lot and i don't know why he don't step up in the pocket to get better balance to throw the football and you know well, it's spot on obviously gets to his receiver very well it's a very well thrown ball but you know his mechanics is something that i think he could really improve upon and throwing off that back foot because that's going to end up getting him hurt down the line if you've got somebody diving at him at the last second and causing him to have a disruption. But step up in the pocket and throw your body into it, and that way your back foot is kind of coming through and you're not sitting there on that left leg like he is right here on his follow-through and uh, possibly getting that taken out. But if he steps up into the pocket and makes that throw, um, just tips his balance a little bit better, but still very spot on with his throw right here against a very mid-defensive backfield that, um, you know, I would just have to say is is not very good. <clears throat>